I'm a hunter. I like to hunt wild boar specifically. Though I have been deer hunting, and have been known to get a turkey for Thanksgiving, I mostly hunt boar. For those of you that don't know, boar are a big problem in the United States. A sow can have two litters a year and it's not uncommon for a litter to consist of ten or more pigs. Given that pigs eat anything and everything, it's not hard to see why the Department of Fish and Wildlife makes it legal to hunt them with almost no restrictions. In my state, it's illegal to hunt most large mammals with night or thermal vision scopes, with the exception of boar and coyote. I'd been saving for a year, mostly fun money. It's hard to explain to your wife that a scope that costs literally twice as much as the rifle I was mounting it on was worth it. But I did it. I took it to a range and sighted it in. There was an area that was peppered with boar activity that I knew would be perfect for a night hunt. It was easily accessible with my truck with easy to find spots that I could set up in that overlooked a large, easy to navigate clearing. The night started uneventful, mostly me tinkering with my new toy, cycling through the settings. I was a little impatient. I'd spotted multiple deer, but they were out of season. And like I mentioned earlier, my current setup wasn't legal for deer. I moved to another spot I'd seen days earlier that probably wasn't much better than my first, but it gave me something to do and a new angle to look around with my new scope. After an hour or so of glancing the area, it dawned on me. This spot doesn't have much animal activity at all. No rabbit or owls. The deer that I'd seen were hundreds of yards from where I was. Why was this pocket of land so dead at night, but lively in the day? I'd set up around 10 p.m., and it was about 2 a.m. when I started to think about packing up, maybe setting up a target before I left and taking some practice shots. I heard a crunch come from the direction I came from before. I panned my scope over and saw the silhouette of a small bear pushing through the bushes. It's important to note that my scope isn't exactly night vision. It's a thermal scope, kind of like a black and white version of what you see in the Predator movies. I adjusted my range and zoomed in a little. I remember jolting a little when I saw that it wasn't really a bear, it was a man. Because he was so low and hunched over, I thought I was looking at a young bear. Is that a game warden? It couldn't be. I would have seen the headlights coming up the road from where I was perched. And where could he have walked from? I was 30 miles away from anything and on public lands. I was about to call out when I adjusted my sights and noticed he was naked. No shoes, pants or anything. I remember being disturbed by his movements, like a squirrel or something, twitchy and grabbing at the foliage, sniffing around and palming the tree. Was that my tree? The one I'd been leaning against earlier? The thought terrified me. Could he smell me? Then he did something I still have nightmares about today. He squatted and placed his hands in the dirt between his feet and stared straight up like a dog mid-howl. And I heard it, a voice coming from that direction. A very compelling female voice. Help, I'm lost. There was a long pause, but neither of us moved a muscle. The center of my sights was trained at the dirt in front of his feet. I couldn't bring myself to aim directly at another person. It went against everything I'd been taught about firearms. Were they lost? Was this some guy that had gone crazy out here? Why was his voice so feminine? Help, please, I can't walk. The voice called out. That's when I called bullshit. Not only could he walk, when I first saw him he was traversing the land with ease for a naked person. So good I mistook him for a bear. That's a fucking trap. This guy is trying to lure me to him with a damsel in distress routine. Luckily the lack of activity before had caused me to pack up most of my gear. I think I may have left behind a hat and a sitting pad, but I didn't give a shit in that moment. I took my eyes off him for a moment to get my pack on. I buckled my chest strap and scrambled for my rifle. To my horror, he was in the same position, but his face was staring in my direction, and I swear I saw a smile. How the hell had he heard me get up and put my gear on? He must have easily been 150 yards away. F off! I screamed in that direction. He stood upright and it hit me how tall and skinny he was, easily six feet and very lean. He took a couple of long strides in my direction, and I instinctively sent a round sailing above his head into the tree line. He was freaky as hell, but he hadn't really threatened me. What would I tell the cops? I was unwilling and unready to shoot someone. After that, he stopped dead in his tracks and hunched down on all fours. The next one will mess you up. Go away. He stayed on all fours, and this time I had my sights trained on the center of him. His eyes were just above the grass like a large cat or something, 
I was trying to stop my trembling and knew that my voice had cracked a little on that last warning. I was terrified. That standoff probably only lasted a minute or two, maybe less. But it felt like forever. In an instant, he bolted left towards the tree line opposite the road. So much for not being able to walk. I could barely keep him in my scope he was moving so fast. He disappeared into the brush and I sent another bullet sailing high in his direction. I racked another round and tried to pocket that mag and swap for a fresh one, but I dropped it and didn't bother looking for it. I wasn't far from my truck and I wanted to get out of there. I could hear him in the distance, yelling in this weird sound that could have been a laugh or a cry. I scrambled up the trail and arrived at my truck breathless. I tossed my gear into the cab, but kept the rifle in the passenger seat and sped off. For the longest time I told that story from the perspective of having spotted some deranged crackhead living off the land like some kind of caveman. I reported it to Fish and Game, but all they did was scold me for hunting at night alone. Never received an update. It wasn't until I told this story at a camping trip that my nephew told me about wendigos, rakes, and skinwalkers. My story scared the piss out of him, because the spot we were camping was technically the same forest I'd seen the bastard, just 50 miles east of it. I almost died protecting my friends, and they'll never know. I live in a city located in a valley with a lot of smaller towns up the hills and mountains around. So it's part of the local culture for teenagers and young adults to visit these smaller areas during the winter to drink, smoke weed, and hang out with their friends. My uncle bought a house in one of these areas, so eventually I decided to get the keys and spend a weekend there with five of my friends. The house has two big bedrooms with three beds each, and a lot of extra mattresses. At night, we decided at some point to go back inside and just chill watching TV. But since the living room had no sofas yet, we brought some mattresses from the bedrooms and just used them. One of my friends, Victor, decided to go out to smoke. And after a few minutes, we hear someone knocking at the window just behind us. Everyone got scared for a second, but just looked at the window and said things like, Oh shoot, it's just Victor. But since we were sitting on mattresses close to the ground, it wasn't easy to see clearly who was at the window. And since the person just stood there looking straight at one of the girls, I got up to check. I saw a man who somehow looked a lot like my friend, but a bit more fat and older than him. As I came to the conclusion that it was a stranger, I froze while looking at him, and him looking back at me. When I said it's not Victor, everyone else also froze and looked at me waiting for a reaction. But all I could think was to ask what he wanted. He just stood there for a second and asked, There's a bar nearby and we need a drummer to play with our band. Is any of your friends a drummer by any chance? Which weirdly enough I am, but I just told him no, and after some extra long seconds looking at us, he left. My friend came back and we made fun of the situation, making jokes on how it was him messing with us, etc. Later most of the group decided to sleep in one bedroom and leave the second for me and one of the girls since they saw us kissing earlier. We all go to bed, but some hours later I wake up to the girl shaking me in horror and whispering that she heard something coming from the kitchen. So I get up, tell her to lock the bedroom door when I leave, and go check the sound like the moron who always dies first in films. As I pass by the second bedroom, I think about calling someone else to join me, but as soon as I see them all sleeping, I hear something at the kitchen's window. I quickly move there in silence, check around and as soon as I find and grab a knife, the door opens right in front of me. It was the same guy. I knew it was no joke since I just saw my friend sleeping. It probably took like 5 or 10 seconds of us staring at each other, but it felt like an eternity. While still holding the door handle, he made a slow movement with the other hand towards something under his shirt, which was probably a gun or knife, but I also lifted my hand showing him my knife, and he stopped. The kitchen was quite small, so we were standing pretty close to each other, and at this point we both knew it would end bad for both if he tried something so I just shook my head and said as calm as I could, don't. He just kept staring at me a bit more, and then finally closed the door and went away. I went back, told the girl it was nothing and that we should go back to bed. I didn't sleep that night. We left early in the morning and I made sure to ask my uncle and cousins if they ever received weird visits there. They said that the only person who ever goes there at night 
is the old neighbor when his wife doesn't let him arrive drunk at home, so he grabs my uncle's rocking chair to sleep until he gets sober. Now every year my friends talk about spending another weekend there, but I always make an excuse so we never go through that again, and they never know what happened. I'll preface this by saying we were 12 or 13 at the time, and my friend and I often snuck out of either of our houses during sleepovers for late night walks. This was the basis of this terrifying encounter, and it stopped us from ever sneaking out after dark again. My friend lived opposite a huge forest, so her house was the preferred choice to sneak out of for us to roam around at night, because the forest was more scary and thrilling. And we always took flashlights food and blankets so we could camp out for a couple of hours before going back home again. Well on this fateful night we inadvertently fell asleep before sneaking out. So when my friend suddenly jolted me from sleep it was past 3 a.m., a lot later than we usually snuck out. We grabbed our essentials and creeped out of the back door into the cold and dark night. Frost crunched underfoot as we crossed the deserted road, and as we reached the entrance to the forest, we noticed how pitch black and completely silent it was unnervingly so. We turned on our torches and stepped onto the uneven path into the forest, the light illuminating the trees swaying in the icy wind. We stepped on fallen sodden leaves and bark as we made an unsteady but familiar way into our favorite part of the forest, our cold breath the only noise to invade the deafening silence. We reached the small hut we constructed one afternoon made entirely of sticks purely for the purpose of having some shelter for our campouts. There were times that vandals or other kids damaged our hut, but for the most part it stayed intact. But on this occasion it was completely destroyed, like a harbinger of worse to come. We were just deciding to just call it a night and come back later on that day to repair the hut when we heard it. This loud shrieking giggle that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. <laughs> my friend and I jumped in shock and looked at each other like, what the heck? We were completely freaked out. The eerie and unnatural giggle rang out again, contradicting the silence and making my body break out in goosebumps. Someone is in here, my friend whispered to me, looking utterly terrified. We have to go now. Her voice of rationale made it even more scary and unnerving to me that someone was in the forest with us at three o'clock in the morning. We just looked at each other in assent and took off running in unison, our footsteps navigating the path as naturally as we could from muscle memory our uneven gasps of air punctuating the giggling that seemed to be following us. Getting closer and closer. Our torches light went up and down with our fast movements illuminating random patches of the trees and bushes as we finally saw a small sliver of light as we came to the forest entrance. Running out of the forest, we didn't stop until we reached the back door of my friend's house and almost collapsed in a breathless heap of relief to be safe. Then my friend's eyes went wide and she nudged me pointing a shaky finger across the road. A haggard middle-aged woman was standing at the forest entrance, giggling that awful, horrifying giggle, and was waving over at us. We screamed and ran inside, and looked out of my friend's bedroom window through the smallest gap in the curtain, and could still see the woman standing there. Worse yet, she was staring right at us, as if she knew we were there. We could tell she was still giggling that hideous, appalling laugh. She turned very slowly, and walked back into the forest again. We never went back to that forest nor went out after dark again. Don't skip this.